Imagine you are 4,000 feet deep in the ocean. No air, no sunlight, just a thick layer of metal between you and the insane pressures of deep water. Submarines are one of the most fascinating machines in the world. And in this video, we explore the largest submarine ever built, the Russian Typhoon SSBN, the most powerful nuclear warship ever made. But that's the thing. When it came to nuclear submarines, the Soviets were always kind of hard to beat. Operating more than 245 nuclear submarines during the Cold War, that's more than all other navies of the world combined. So how big are we talking? The Typhoon measures 175 meters, 574 feet long. That's about as long as a rugby pitch. It's also 76 feet wide and almost 40 feet tall. On its surface, it has a displacement of 24.5 thousand tons. That doubles when the ship goes underwater. So yeah, it's pretty big and heavy, which kind of makes sense as it has to carry 20 intercontinental ballistic missiles stored in six different torpedo heads. Traveling at speeds of up to 28 knots, or 32 miles per hour in land terms, on practically unlimited fuel, there is no need for Typhoon to reach land for a top-up. But tell you what makes this ship truly formidable. It's the advanced noise reduction technology the ship uses which makes the vessel so difficult, even impossible for enemy forces to detect. Spoiler alert, in the Cold War movie Hunting for Red October, a Russian submarine snuck its way into American waters at the height of the arms race. Truly some mind-boggling times. In fact, did you know at the height of the Cold War, Russia was commissioning 5 to 10 nuclear submarines from each of its four submarine yards, making this undetectable nuclear pad one of the CIA's worst nightmares at the time. Let's face it, the new Typhoon was longer than any craft owned by the U.S. Navy. I mean, sure, the U.S. may have commissioned the world's first nuclear submarine, the Nautilus, but the Typhoon was still the largest underwater ship ever built. Pretty special, I'd say. Random fact drop, did you know luxury car maker Rolls-Royce worked with the British Atomic Authority to build a new nuclear propulsion system for a submarine? Didn't quite see that coming. So by now, you're probably wondering how this massive sea monster finds the power it needs to propel itself through deep waters. Well, unlike conventional submarines that use steam engines, nuclear subs use a nuclear propulsion system to generate electric power. So it doesn't need air which means there's no rush to get back to land. It also means a nuclear sub can travel at high speeds for a long period of time. In case of the Typhoon, speeds of up to 28 knots. But why is the Typhoon so much bigger than regular submarines? Well, all Typhoon-class subs were designed to have multiple pressure hulls, allowing them to be bigger than your average submarine. It also means when one pressure hull is breached, Crew members in the other are safe, so there is generally less chance for flooding. Mind you, submarines like the Typhoon don't travel alone. They're usually escorted by two or more other submarines. Amazing how despite being one of the most complicated structures built by man, the ship still manages to provide comfortable living for a 160-strong crew. Yup, that's all the peeps who have gladly volunteered to live underwater for months. Luckily for them, the Typhoon is also fitted with jacuzzis and a swimming pool. But hey, let's get real here. If you're inside one of these, you need to know that a lot could go wrong. Of course, there is always the looming risk of radioactive loss, what with all the nukes in there. But there is also a safety hazard associated with carrying liquid metal coolant, probably the most common cause of accidents in subs. Worst comes to worst, you can damage the nuclear reactors themselves during refueling as you lift the vessel heads. Let's be honest, the possibilities here are endless. And if there's anything the recent Titan tragedy proves, it's that even after 50 successful test dives in the Bahamas, one of the most advanced modern submersibles could still turn into debris in a matter of nanoseconds. To learn more about the Titan episode, check the video link below. Now, back to warships. Did you know only six countries in the world have nuclear submarines? But as of now, two more countries, Australia and Brazil, are also looking to develop their own. 
From a military perspective, a ship like the Typhoon is the most strategic weapon a country can have. Only six of these legendary Typhoon-class submarines were ever built. At the time, building one Typhoon was equal to building two new Bore-class submarines. So if you're going just by the numbers, it's clear that Russia wanted something extra, something truly formidable to project their naval power in the world, especially against the US. Only four of the original six subs were kept by the Russian army after the fall of the Soviet Union. Fun fact, did you know the Typhoons are only known as Typhoons in the West? The Russians actually named them Akula boats. That's sharks in Russian. Anyway, gotta admit, from the K-3, the first Soviet nuclear sub that experienced a fire in the hydraulics, killing 39 sailors back in the 60s, to a modern nuclear-powered submarine with enough cargo space to move 10,000 tons of oil under the polar ice and safely deliver them to army tankers, Russian sailors have come a long way. To learn more about fascinating structures around the world, on land, sea, or space, Make sure to hit subscribe so you never miss out.